Hey everyone, here I am coming to you from my newest office location, my home office, and welcome to my first recorded video for the IP course. I wanted to prove that there was definitely a person narrating all the content on these slides. Um, and I also wanted to just say welcome back to the start of the year. I know this year will be a little bit different than most, but I hope we can still work together to get you to where you need to be before you go out on your appy rotations. The topic of this video is multiple sclerosis or MS pathophysiology. If you have any questions about this content or any of my content in the IP course series, you can always email me or you can set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me using my unique link through Calendly. I look forward to seeing you all at some point this semester. Let's start with the definition of multiple sclerosis. MS is an inflammatory autoimmune disease characterized by demyelination of neurons in the CNS. And this includes both the brain and the spinal cord. It also includes the formation of plaques, also known as lesions or scarring, as well as loss of axons. MS currently affects about 400,000 people in the US. Most patients are diagnosed between the ages of 15 and 45 with peak incidence occurring between the ages of 30 and 40. Women are affected by MS twice as often as men, and the incidence is twice as high in individuals of Caucasian background. The graph shown here displays the prevalence of MS in number of cases per 100,000 of the population. We can learn two things from this graph. First, that the prevalence of MS is highest in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, which makes sense given that the peak incidence of diagnosis is somewhere between 30 and 40. Second, MS is more prevalent in females compared to males by about a factor of two across most age groups. Interestingly, the risk of developing multiple sclerosis differs depending on the geography in which a person grew up. MS is about five times more prevalent in temperate climates north of the equator compared to tropical climates near the equator, and even in most cases compared to temperate climates south of the equator. High-risk areas include most of the United States and Canada, Europe, as well as Northern Asia. One important thing to note about this distribution of risk by geography is that it depends where an individual grew up before the age of 12 years old. If a child grows up in a high risk area and subsequently moves to a low risk area after the age of 12, they still retain that higher risk of developing MS. And the reverse is also true. If a child grew up in a low risk area and subsequently moves to a higher risk area after the age of 12, they retain that lower risk from the area in which they grew up. There are two primary groups of factors that affect the etiology or the development of MS. And these are genetic factors and environmental factors. For genetics, it is known that MS runs in families. However, the inheritance pattern is complicated and it is not a simple or straightforward genetic inheritance. There are many different genes or alleles that have been shown to be involved in the inheritance of MS. The ones with the highest level of evidence are human leukocyte antigen or HLA alleles. And these genes confer immune function. Genetics explain about 30% of the disease risk for developing MS, which is a relatively high percentage of disease risk when comparing to other disease states. As for environmental factors, there are some elements that have been shown to increase the risk of developing MS. These are vitamin D deficiency, viral infection, 
with viruses such as Epstein-Barr virus and cytomegalovirus, and a prior history of smoking. All of these factors increase risk for developing MS. Before discussing the pathophysiology of MS, it is helpful to review the purpose of myelination in general. Myelin is a tight protective layer surrounding axons in the central and peripheral nervous systems. Myelin is formed by a special type of cell called an oligodendrocyte. Oligodendrocytes are responsible for myelination in the CNS and Schwann cells are responsible for myelination in the peripheral nervous system or PNS. These cells form tightly wrapped sheaths around axons that allow for some protection as well as for more efficient conduction of an action potential along the axon. The pathophysiology of MS is characterized by demyelination of neurons in the white matter of the brain and the spinal cord. The white matter is where long axonal projections that are heavily myelinated are typically found, and therefore it makes sense that demyelination would occur in these areas. The demyelination is due to an autoimmune reaction in which immune cells are activated, they infiltrate the brain and the spinal cord from the periphery, and cause diffuse injury known as plaques, sclerosis, lesions, or scarring. The result of these plaques or lesions is that there is reduced connectivity along axons, and eventually this can lead to neuronal cell death and loss of brain volume. However, remyelination may occur if the process is stopped before the oligodendrocyte cells themselves are destroyed or damaged. The process of autoimmune activation and immune cell infiltration into the brain and subsequent damage is rather complicated, but I will highlight a few important aspects of this figure. The first thing that happens in multiple sclerosis is that there is an autoimmune activation of CD4 positive Th1 helper T cells. These T cells are activated by antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells, macrophage, or B cells. And specifically, they are activated to recognize various myelin proteins, including proteolipid protein, myelin basic protein, and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. So now these T cells are activated to go do damage to those myelin proteins. So the activated T cells are able to migrate to sites in the CNS. They're able to infiltrate into the CNS across capillary membranes, where they then subsequently activate several, several additional cell types including additional macrophage and CD8 positive killer T cells. Activated macrophage are responsible for direct damage to myelin following the release of various inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and reactive oxygen species. Oligodendrocytes are damaged by both macrophage, and CD8-positive killer T cells. In addition, B cells are also activated as part of this response, and activated B cells and plasma cells are responsible for some of the damage in MS as well. Now is a good time to stop and review some of your anatomy and physiology. Take a moment to recall the process of cell-mediated immunity, also known as type 4 hypersensitivity or type 4 immune reaction. What is the role of the helper T cells in that process? And how does this cell-mediated immune response relate to the pathophysiology of multiple sclerosis? If you need help answering this question, snap a photo of this QR code with your phone and it will take you to a video with additional information.